Today I'm going to talk to you about some preliminary findings from the qualitative study. Um, now the aims of this were firstly to improve our understanding of the experience of restraint or uh, physical intervention for patients and staff on mental health wards within CPFT. Um, we also wanted to get suggestions from those people as to how they think restraint could be reduced. And finally, as Sarah mentioned earlier, in the Department of Health guidance, they talked about positive and proactive care as a way of reducing restraint. So we wanted to explore what patient and staff understanding of proactive care is. So I'd firstly like to acknowledge the help that we received from two advisory groups who were invaluable to the study design. Um, so firstly, a staff advisory group um, comprising frontline staff from CPFT who have experience of restraining patients um, uh, met and uh, inputted with us about the design of the study and how we were going to be interviewing staff participants. And secondly, the service user advisory group comprising mental health service users with experience of being restrained themselves within CPFT. And they were particularly helpful and um, their input ranged from you know, helping us with the wording of the information sheets and the consent forms um, to the questions that we actually asked people and also for the support that we provided for people if they became distressed um, when they were speaking about their experiences as this is obviously a very emotive issue and we wanted to be very sensitive to this. So myself and Lorna Rouse, who's the research assistant on the PROMISE project, we conducted semi-structured one-to-one interviews um, and we conducted these with patients um, who had either personally been restrained within CPFT mental health care or had witnessed the restraint because as, as Sarah said earlier, witnessing the restraint is also can be very distressing. Um, we also interviewed current members of staff within CPFT um, who could have been in any job role um, and again had either directly restrained patients or had witnessed the restraint of patients. So we've conducted 13 patient <coughs> interviews um, comprising six males and seven females. Um, three of them had only witnessed restraint um, and 10 of them had direct experience, um, but the majority of whom had also witnessed restraint and drew on that experience as well in the interviews. Ten of them were current inpatients and three of them were former inpatients who were reflecting back on their, their time in inpatient care. We also conducted 22 staff interviews. Um, four of them had witnessed restraint and 18 of them had direct experience, but again, the majority of whom had also witnessed restraint. Uh, and as you can see from the slide, there were various job roles. We got a real range of views of people, ranging from ward managers to healthcare assistants, uh, a housekeeper, clinical psychologist, and so on. And we were really hoping to get that variety of views, so we were really pleased about that. Um, so I'm just going to take you through now just some of the emerging themes. Um, we're in very early stages of analysis. Um, and I'm going to mostly focus on the patient interviews um, because we've, we've made a bit more progress with, with the themes of that. But I will also briefly mention what's coming forward in the staff interviews. Firstly, in relation to patient experience, um, it, patients described it as being distressing, as being dehumanising. Um, as in Naomi's video, she mentioned uh, feeling like an animal. That was something that did come up in a number of the interviews that it felt like you were a prisoner, that you weren't treated like a human being. Also, uh, it reminded people of previous trauma. For example, the quote on the slide um, is from a female former inpatient who had been abused by her father as a child. Um, and when she was restrained, she had real vivid memories of that. Patients also described this feeling of a loss of control um, and there was a lot of description about a pa the power relationship between patients and staff and that restraint was a demonstration of the control and power that staff had and the lack of control that patients had. So one of the key themes that's come out with regard to experience and the suggestions that people made is around communication. Um, and in relation to patient experience, both good and poor examples of communication were described. Um, and this can be communication before the restraint, during the restraint, or after the restraint. 
Um, so just some of the quotes here. Um, the first quote was from a current inpatient who he wasn't very happy with the way that restraint had happened. Um, he was being restrained because he was refusing medication. But even though he wasn't happy with the situation, he did acknowledge that staff tried quite hard to get him to accept it. Um, the female current inpatient, whose quote is up there as well, um, she said that things were explained to her as they were happening. She was explained to why it was happening and was talked to afterwards um, about what, what had happened, why had she behaved aggressively to try and prevent that happening again. However, there were a, no a number of poor examples of communication. Um, some patients felt that there wasn't discussion um, up until the last point, when really it should be, should be discussed until the last moment. People did feel that they also weren't spoken to afterwards. Um, a number of people said that there wasn't any kind of debrief and that they would have found that helpful to have talked about it afterwards. So now we're uh, quickly moving on to the suggestions that patients made for reducing uh, physical intervention. Again, communication, very important. Nearly every patient said that effective communication between staff and patients is essential to any attempt to reduce restraint. And related to that is also the importance of patient-staff relationships. Um, so it's very important for staff to get to know the patients, whether that be uh, their clinical history, um, their likes, their dislikes, um, and so on. Um, and also the importance of staff being compassionate. Um, when one patient was asked what could have been done instead of restraining you, she said, you know, just giving you a hug, that would be nice. And another patient also said it would have been nice if she'd have been made a cup of tea um, or something like that. The importance of staff having empathy was also emphasised. Um, one patient said that she felt that she wasn't understood because staff hadn't put themselves into her shoes and didn't think about what it was like for her with her mental health difficulties and being sectioned. Okay, so this is just a, a visual image to represent the communication theme. Um, and this is meant to illustrate a member of staff speaking to a patient. Um, and around the image are words that have come up in the interviews about what is needed in patient-staff relationships um, in order for restraint to be reduced. Okay, so just moving on to some more of the patient suggestions. Um, environment and space was another key factor. Um, patients talked about the importance um, of having enough space to keep people apart if they were aggravating one another, to have de-escalation rooms and sensory rooms, and also having a nice environment, a nice feel in the wards. Um, people wanting it to be a place of healing. Um, and also the importance of staff having clear and consistent guidelines of when restraint should be used was also seen as important because patients that we interviewed, a number of them had felt that it wasn't implemented consistently in their experience. So finally, uh, another theme that has come out so far is that patients feel that restraint is sometimes necessary and that it, it cannot be completely eliminated, but of course emphasise that it should be a last resort. Um, and this was for reasons around safety. Um, so some patients described uh, being worried by other patients um, and feeling unsafe and actually wanting them to be restrained for their own safety. Also for the safety of themselves. Um, one person said, you know, if I hadn't have been restrained, I wouldn't be alive. Um, so yes, there we go. Um, and I, I think I've run out of time now, but um, just to say, we've still got the staff analysis to come. Um, but a number of overlapping themes um, are coming through. Again, communication is a really key theme and the use of environment and space. And again, staff have also expressed that restraint is sometimes necessary, but of course should always be a last resort. Thank you very much.